Welcome everyone, I'm Norman Wahlberger and we are talking about volumes and capacity today. How to teach young people about a very important measurement system closely connected to the measurement of weight that we talked about in our last video. But this is volume where we're talking about how much capacity or uh, sort of space is occupied typically by a, a liquid or maybe by some grain. Okay, so the origins of this go back to ancient Egypt, uh, ancient uh, Mesopotamia. In the Mesopotamia, the Sumerians, who lived around 3000 to 2000 BC, had a whole bunch of complicated units to measure this kind of volume for perhaps grain or beer or oil. The Sumerians um, had beer. And then a little bit later, in the old Babylonian times, around 1900 to 1600 BC, the, the measurement systems kind of coalesced a little bit. There was a little bit more uniformity of culture over a wider region. And uh, this is one example of a kind of a measurement system that was in place at that time. So this is for, for volume, how much grain do we have, or how much beer do we have in a barrel, perhaps, or how much oil. So the main unit was the silla, okay, which is very close to the modern liter. Okay? So the liter we've already talked about, that's a measurement of volume. And here's an example of a liter. So here's some uh, stock, beef stock, and there's one liter in here. So this is a measure of volume, and uh, that's roughly comparable to what the old Babylonians called a silla. Now, the silla itself was composed of 60 gin, and one gin was composed of a much smaller unit, a she. So 180 she was one gin. And in terms of sillas, 10 of them formed one ban, 6 ban formed one bariga, and 5 bariga formed one gur. So we definitely had these different units being able to measure different scales of, of quantities. Lots of things, or perhaps very small ones. Now, while we sometimes use the word volume, sometimes it's maybe a little bit more instructive to use the word capacity. And capacity refers to volume in the context of grains or liquids. More so than, say, the volume of a box. Usually rather in terms of a liquid or a grain. So this is a, a topic that goes back uh, to antiquity. And it's a very important topic and a very instructive one for young children to uh, strengthen their arithmetical understanding and connect with the real world around them. Historically, the most important capacity would have been grain, because that was the primary food. Grain, perhaps wheat or oats or barley or rice, etc. So we might have something like a bushel or a sack of, of grain. Uh, that represents a, a certain quantity which was easier to measure than weighing it. So in former times, weighing especially heavy sacks of stuff was more problematic. These days, of course, weighing is actually easier because we have these scales and you can weigh things uh, very easily. But back then, uh, volume or capacity would have been perhaps uh, more used for describing how much grain we have. Uh, well, today, grains and cereals are usually measured by weight, uh, not volume. So, for example, here in our kitchen, we have a tub of self-raising flour. Okay, so that's, um, that's a grain. And it's measured by kilogram. It's, this is one kilogram of flour. Okay, that's a weight unit, not a volume or capacity unit. Now, the modern system for measuring capacity or volumes uh, is a little bit complicated. And so here is a sort of a bird's eye view of it, and we'll leave some additional complexity for a later time. In the SI or the metric system, the basic unit we've already said is the liter. And in terms of liters, a thousand of them is a kiloliter. And the subunit of a liter is a milliliter, which is one thousandth of a liter. So a thousand milliliters is a liter and a thousand liters is a kiloliter. So again we see the importance of the number thousand going from one unit to uh, another unit. Now there's a second system, the US or the imperial systems, 
which have uh, more or less the same structure, but the units are actually a little bit different. So there's actually two uh, separate systems here, although they're very closely aligned. And there the units are the cup, pint, quart, and gallon. So if we think of the gallon as being sort of the fundamental unit, then the quart is a quarter of the gallon, hence the usage word quart. So four quarts to a gallon. And then a pint, well that's half of a quart, or two pints make a quart. And a cup is half of a pint, so two cups make a pint. So this is a very sort of human-based uh, system. These ratios are quite small and easy to work with, so these are actually quite convenient for, you know, drinking beer and uh, consuming liquids and so on and making um, making kitchen recipe kind of uh, computations. This system is the more scientific one, it's more precise, we have a greater subdivision, but on the other hand, the numbers involved are typically uh, larger. So uh, in Australia, of course, we use uh, the metric system, so we can look in our fridge and we can find uh, various uh, things. So for example, here is a bottle of vinegar, white vinegar, and two liter bottle, right? So there's a two liter bottle. Uh, here is some extra virgin olive oil, and we see that it's 750 milliliters. Okay, so ML is a short form for a milliliter. So 750 is not quite a thousand. That's gonna be some fraction or some portion of a liter. Not quite a liter, but not too far away from a liter also. What else do we have here to show you? Okay, so here's some apple cider vinegar. And down here, you will not be able to see, but it says 500 milliliters, 500 milliliters. Well, 500 is exactly half of a thousand, or 500 plus a 500 is a thousand. So this is uh, one half of a liter. Two of these would make one liter. Okay, and uh, maybe we should say the gallon in the U.S. imperial system is uh, often associated with gas. That's sort of how much a standard uh, portable gas uh, canister has in it. So these are the, the two systems that we uh, conveniently use, um, but there is a little bit of overlap and there's some extra complexity that um, we should also talk about at some future point. Okay, it's not quite as simple as this. Now for our scientific work around the world, the metric system is almost exclusively used. So any kind of scientific equipment involving flasks or beakers or test tubes, etc., they will all be calibrated with respect to the metric or SI system. However, when we come to the kitchen, which is a very important application of volumes and in fact also weights, cooking, recipes, baking cakes, etc. These things are often sometimes better served by the somewhat larger and more manageable units in the US or the imperial system. And so there's actually a little bit of a crossover, okay? So I remind you that in the US or imperial system, a quart consisted of four cups. So a cup times four is a quart. And that's quite a convenient kind of ratio of volumes, and it's also sort of been adopted by the metric system also. Maybe not quite officially, but sort of unofficially, especially when having to do with uh, kitchen homewares. Okay, so we already talked about a milliliter and a liter. We know that a thousand milliliters is a liter. That means that a milliliter is a lot smaller than a liter. So it's useful to introduce a metric cup, okay, which is playing the same kind of role as a cup in the US or imperial system. In this system, four of these cups equals one quart. In the metric system, we say that a metric cup is a quarter of a liter, or four of these will make up a liter, just like four cups make up a quart. Well, then it follows that, in fact, a metric cup consists of 250 milliliters, because 250 times 4 is 1,000. Right. So 
what we're doing is we're kind of appropriating some kind of unit in the US or imperial system in the scientific or metric system, especially useful when we're working in the kitchen. So for example, here is a beaker with uh, some indications, which you're probably not gonna be able to see. Uh, there's one liter here, but it, in terms of uh, grams, it's also 750, 500, 250. But also, you can see uh, that's one cup, two cups, three cups, four cups. Okay, so the notion of a cup is a useful additional tool, especially useful for metrical uh, work in the kitchen when you're cooking or baking. So just as when we were studying weights, we would like to encourage young people to go out and actually measure and record the volumes or capacities of various things that they find around the house or various amounts of fluid. So for example, um, what we could do is get kids to estimate and measure the capacities of various kitchen glasses, cups, and containers. So here is a plastic paper cup and we could fill this with uh, liquid and say, you know, how much liquid is contained in this cup? Well, so the child could estimate what they think might be the, the volume, and then we could pour it into here and read off the level, and then we have a, a record of how much the capacity of the cup is. All right, we could do this for a wide variety of things. And so with a little bit of experience, then we could take a bunch of different containers, and kitchens are usually full of all kinds of different shape, glasses, containers, vases, etc. We can then, for example, order the capacities of various containers, say starting with the, the smallest volume and then working our way up more and more volumes. In this case here, in order to determine which of these two, say, has the greatest capacity, we would actually fill them with some liquid, presumably water, and then pour those, those quantities into a container and read the corresponding levels. Okay, so it's a very direct kind of thing, pouring water from one thing to another. It's kind of fun, and um, this gives kids uh, experience. Again, connecting the abstract numerical system with something that's tangible, that's physical, that they can get their hands on. So these two measurement systems of weight and volume are closely connected. And sometimes it's reasonable to measure the quantity of something, either by a, a weight measurement or by a volume measurement. Both of them give us interesting information. And in the metrical system, the two scales that we're using are naturally linked. And they're linked by water. So water is the connection between weight and volume, between the units of weight and the units of volume in the metric system. And the way that works, we've already talked about this, that the definition of one kilogram, well, up to relatively recently, was that it's the weight of water contained in one liter. So if this was water instead of uh, beef stock, then the weight of this one liter of water would be one kilogram. Okay. So one kilogram corresponds to one liter. And since the kilogram is divided into a thousand grams, and the liter is also divided into a thousand milliliters, there is then a precise correspondence between the number of grams that a certain amount of water weighs and the amount of milliliters, which is its capacity. So a hundred milliliters of water will weigh a hundred grams. 500 milliliters of water will weigh 500 grams, and so on. So that's a very simple system. And of course, one milliliter of water weighs one gram. And how much is a milliliter of water actually in terms of sort of a volume? Well, it turns out to be just a cubic centimeter. Okay, so a centimeter is about uh, this. So a little bit less than half of an inch. There is a centimeter, okay, and here's a little box whose sides are all of one centimeter. So it's a very little box, okay, and that volume is one milliliter, okay, and so that volume 
of one milliliter would weigh one gram if it was filled with just water. So in the metric system, everything works quite nicely uh, with respect to water. But we might say, might mention that if you have some other substance, not water, maybe vinegar or maybe beef stock or something else, then this correspondence between weight and volume is going to be different. There's also going to be a correspondence, but it's going to be more subtle. And it depends on the, the nature of the substance that you're talking about. So that brings us to the topic of density, which is something that we can learn about later on once we've mastered weights and capacities. So especially useful for young children who perhaps want to help out in the kitchen to understand that there are these measuring cups that help us in understanding volumes and capacities of fluids or or other uh, things like grain or uh, sand, even uh, any kind, anything that pours. And uh, so here's sort of a standard system of cups, a one cup unit, okay? And I've got some here, so this is just borrowed from our kitchen. There is a one cup uh, unit. It says one cup on it. There it is there. And then next smaller unit is a half a cup. Okay, there's a half a cup. There's one cup, there's a half a cup, and then uh, a third of a cup, there's a third of a cup, and finally a quarter of a cup, okay? And these uh, have uh, little indicators on here which you're not able to read, but anyway. So uh, this kind of system of measuring cups, it's also a very useful thing to have in a classroom. Okay. Ideally, actually, classrooms should have little water sinks, some places where you can pour water and uh, fiddle around with water and volumes and so on. That's a very uh, handy thing to have. And something like this is a great tool to help kids start to appreciate, uh, well, not just volumes, but also we're touching base, as you can see, with the idea of a fraction. Okay, so we are... We're talking about fractions, but don't use the word fraction. Don't tell kids that, okay, now we're doing fractions. We're not doing that. We're just using these very particular measuring cups to help us measure stuff. And all what they need to know is that two of these half cups equal one cup. Two of these make one of these. And they can test that by filling this with water twice, and yep, you'll get right up to the top of that second one. Okay, and similarly, three of these one-third cups give you the big one. And similarly, four of these a quarter cups give us a cup. Okay, so that's the crucial property of these smaller subdivisions. Two of these is a cup, three of these is a cup, four of these is a cup. Okay, so we're learning a little bit about about fractions, just a very brief introduction in the context of measuring, and there's lots now of stuff that children can do. Lots of investigations to make, lots of questions that one can pose, lots of little problems to solve, little fun activities to do, because we're pouring around with water and stuff, and it's uh, all kind of fun. Now there's a lot of arithmetical problems now that can be posed in terms of this framework of volume measurement. Okay, so that gives some meaning to otherwise perhaps unmotivated arithmetical questions. And in the course that I'm going to put together here, I'm going to give you lots of examples in this direction. So easy questions, not so easy questions, some challenging ones for students to get experience doing arithmetic in the context of something very specific, the context of weighing and measuring volumes. So for example, what is more? One cup or one half a cup plus one third a cup plus one quarter of a cup? Okay, so going back to our measuring ones, there's the one cup and there are the other three. And if we fill all these up, we fill this one up, which one has the most water? Okay, so that's not 
that hard, but it's not that easy either. And some understanding has to be brought to bear here, right? They have to have some sense of what the meanings of these things are. And all what they need to know is that two of these make a, a, a cup, three of these make a cup, and four of these make a cup. Another kind of question is, how many, say, half a cups will be required to fill a liter? Or in the American system, a, a quart. Okay, so there's a half a cup. There is a liter, up to about there. How many of these do we have to pour in to get the liter? Of course, we can try it and actually see what happens. Uh, but they should probably also be able to after some encouragement and maybe some simpler examples, start to understand how to solve such a problem and, uh, and pose it as a, a multiplication question. That's an important point that I want to emphasize. That we're just starting this course and we've introduced addition and multiplication as the primary operations. We want to phrase our questions in terms of addition and multiplication. All right, so Subtraction and division, in my view, uh, come later. They're, they're more complicated. Okay? So when we ask a question like this, it's not a question of dividing one thing by another. No. I want the student to think in terms of multiplication the following way. So to answer this question, what's really being asked is, what do we have to multiply this by to get this? Okay? How many of these do we need to make this? That's a multiplication question. Okay, so that's, uh, that's great. There's all kinds of interesting questions like this that can, be, uh, that can be asked. In our next video, we want to go a little bit further in this direction and connect with, with cooking, where we have to introduce uh, another range of possibilities for measuring, uh, well, weights, but in particular volumes. So I hope you'll join me for that. I'm Nolan Wahlberger. Thanks for listening.